Hey, welcome to a very special brew. Um, we are very privileged to have access to the Lemp Mausoleum. We had to go through some hoops to get this one. Uh, we had to write a letter explaining what we wanted to do. And we wanted to assure that uh, we would treat this with, um, with the respect that it deserves. So please join us on a very special and private tour of the Lemp Mausoleum. So the other thing about this one, I don't know if you're catching or not, but when this was built in 1902, just before the World's Fair, mm -hmm. there are push buttons over there for the electric lighting and it has an electric heater in its basement. Oh. So that when the lamps would come, they would be comfortable. They would be comfortable. And more. William J. came a lot. Yes. For the short period of time. Because stop to think about it. Sure. June 1903 to February of 1904. Yeah. And kind of the at least the way we view it. The straw that breaks the camel's back is the fact that in January of 1904, Frederick Paps died, yes. Colonel Paps. That's what we've been reading. It's interesting, was there ever a bench or anything? It's not that I know of. I mean, that doesn't mean that there wasn't, but right. Edwin is the one who basically saw the electricity being a drain on the endowment. I and see. so he's the one who had us go ahead and sever the... And then. Right. Yeah. And then we just retain the endowment. Mm -hmm. We have over a hundred above ground mausoleums. Mm -hmm. So all of them pretty much have endowments put in place by the families. And so there's a constant conversation with them as far as needs and necessities. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no such thing as a permanent structure. <laughs> right. As we Whether all... it's above ground or below ground, they're all going to fail eventually. It, so. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Another path we're going down is how prohibition really affected St. Right. Louis. And, um, and our guy, Volkamp, was very outspoken on how he felt about that. Right. Yeah. So. That's where most Germans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They but, the, the if, well, but the interesting spin on that is going to be if you stop to look at St. Louis history, what you have is you have the Civil War mm -hmm. and the women who are part of the St. Louis Union Aid Society. Many of them will morph into the first suffragist. The right. first suffragist organization is led by um, Virginia Minor, who was part of the St. Louis Union Aid Society. And then the majority of them went dry. Mm -hmm. Phoebe Cousins is the example of somebody who started out dry. She'll go wet, and then she's completely alienated from the rest of her suffragists. Oh, yeah. So, There's no room for that, huh? You don't have to talk to them. <laughs> so interestingly enough, we have one of our researchers who's just focused on men of the cloth. And what we've identified, again, being non-sectarian, we pretty much have everybody here uh, mm -hmm. represented. During the Civil War, they would declare a side, north or south, and they'd see their congregation schism in half, some of them never coming back together. But when the next national debate comes in, these same men of the cloth will choose not to pick a side, mm -hmm. and that is women receiving the right to vote. And if you ask them where they stood, they'd hee haw back and forth because they knew no matter what they said, they'd lose half their congregation. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So this is Ellie uh, Kohler Lemp. She is the second wife of Billy Lemp. Mm -hmm. So uh, Billy committed suicide in 22. This was who he was married to at the time. She lived up into the 40s. Yeah, yeah 41. Um, yeah, we are able to see the history through either journals or newspaper articles. And so a big thing is like the journalists are the same today well, as they were then. No. The debate we had, which is why was Lemps, why are the Lemps always focused on, why is the stories always focused on suicide? Mm -hmm. and my argument was they didn't have a defender after mm -hmm. it happened. Right. There was exactly. nobody out in the press, you know, slinging right. it back, you know, and trying to keep everybody focused on the right things. Again, Edwin never had much interest in the brewery. He was the one who would have been, yeah. you know, carrying the torch and he mm -hmm. went off to do his own thing. Yeah. You? So, yeah. Just uh, although you'll, you'll find some interesting stuff about him in the meeting. <laughs> when you're ready, we're going in this way. Perfect. Sorry, I'm getting <laughs> So we have 14 miles of roadway. We have an additional seven miles of carriage pathways. So if you line up these, what I call golf markers, this oh. is a carriage path. You can see it. So this makes a little bit more sense when we get up to Adam, uh, because everybody thinks he's kind of turning his back to the roads, the but there was another carriage pathway on the other side. 
Huh? No, no, no. They were just grass and ways. And again, this would be how the carriages would come in. in the, I know, cemetery humor, dead giveaway. You can notice that the stones face this way and this way, oh. meaning that there's a road here in the middle. So these are two matching lots. Basically, Adam bought this one and the Frickerts bought the one next to it. Okay. These are the only remaining people on that equal lot. On that one, okay. And you notice there is the, the I infant. call it the missing infant limb. Mm -hmm. Then they have two of their own children. This is where they were before they were moved to the, to the lamp mausoleum. mausoleum. Bad news for us when we do Adam because we're usually running a trolley by. You can't really read anything. Right. This is an old carriage pathway that goes down through here. Okay. So this is why he faces this direction. It actually hooks that way. And you can kind oh, of, like, again, you can, you can kind of, kind of follow it. your eye out that direction. So. Right. We have a mic from uh, Charles Bromick, who uh, partnered with William J. Lamp, um, is buried here mm -hmm. right, on this plot. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. so, wow. and very significant. You compare it to <laughs> much of anything else. That's a, that's a chunk of stone. <laughs> <laughs> and music? here's the other thing to keep in mind. We had noted by the 1880s that marble, limestone do not stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. This is put in somewhere between 1860, 1880. So before our uh, granite edict, and it's granite. It's, it's yeah, I was going to say. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, ready for something completely different? Yes. This is when we cue that. But this is the broken column which identifies a life interrupted. Oh, I uh, see. Not somebody who died young, but somebody who was doing something at the time of their death. And I see. It is a, another piece of reoccurring iconography in the cemetery. Before they all started, three look the same. And then I so treated it's just this the cleaning it off. with detail. Not cleaning. Not cleaning, spray. sorry, not cleaning. Spray, yeah. <laughs> and again, um, the, if you put your hand up to one of these and pull it back, you'll feel the grit. Mm -hmm. And so, you don't want to touch these at all. That's why we disallow any tombstone rubbing. Okay. Uh, it is detrimental to the stones. We'd rather you image like you guys are doing, or if we have to have a contact, we will do blueprint paper and a tennis ball. Oh. And so that pressure will pull up a better image. It does take a little bit of practice to do. Have you have you seen these people on TikTok who show how they like go and clean off? Yeah, and a lot of them are killing the stones. Yeah. That's interesting, um, I didn't think about that. So one of the ones that is the worst is when you have these mm -hmm. engraved letters and you put, um, you know, if it's still like this, what they'll do is mm -hmm. they'll put shaving cream and then smooth it out and that pops the letters. But those, what is it, the lubricants the that are in that there, actually yeah. break down the stones. Huh. And so you'll come back later and all the words are gone. Oh, so like goodness. this stone is not readable, but if you spray it with that stuff like that, you'll be able Probably to so, because what's in there are biologics. Yeah, that's all the that's lichen. That's filling in the gap. So once the moss and the lichen come out, you get a lot more detail. Wow. I couldn't read, you know, William and Anne uh, yeah. before this. Um, again, we buy it by the 55 gallon drum, <laughs> but uh, if you buy like a little gallon container, it's like 30, 35 bucks. Wow. So not cheap stuff. No. And it doesn't go far, I'm sure. Yeah. And this is a very long process. This has been treated once. We'll treat it one more time. Um, there's another one that we'll treat probably three times. Uh, and they have to come out in moon suits when they put this stuff on. Oh. So this is not friendly stuff. <laughs> this isn't stuff you just go buy with a pump sprayer. Spray right. Pump. You can pull out of our computer system. Mm -hmm. um, all 87,000 are online. Hmm. So after Frederick dies, she right. remarries Leon. And what you'll see in this marker's song, sure. oh, yep, sorry. Got green. Um, <laughs> he dies within just a couple of years of that second marriage. Oh, right. And she's like, never again. Yeah. Uh, she's got a daughter, mm -hmm. Frederick's, mm -hmm. eligible for all of the windfalls from father's death, mother's death. Right. and repeatedly the limps will minimize their inheritance. Mm. Mm. If anybody's got a bone to pick. It's, yeah, it's her. So, right, yeah, well, because when, when her and Frederick got married, didn't just her father and her and her sister pass? It, it was lots to... of tragedy. I, I right. don't remember the detail, but I know there was lots of tragedy. I, this woman experienced more than any woman should experience. <sighs> So, and like I said, it's not just the loss of life that happened, it's just the constant fight for what truly should have just been an automatic mm -hmm. part of the right. uh, inheritance. So. Well, this is, um, this is a kind of a sad one. Hmm. 
Uh, are you rolling? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that was really exciting. I really enjoyed, we all really enjoyed this tour of Bellefontaine. We'd like to thank Dan Fuller for his time and for that really intimate view into um, something that most people don't get to see on a regular basis. So thanks for coming with us.